Are you ready? Because he's ready. It's Master John, martial arts expert, instructor extraordinaire, and general clown. He's not afraid of coronavirus. He's not afraid of the bad guys. Master Jeff is not afraid of anything. Come on, baby. Come on, please work. Please work. Come on, come on. Run. Come on. Who loves you? Who loves you, baby? Come on. Come on. Hello? Check one. Two. Hey, hey, guys, what's up? Master Jeff here. I'm just making a few last minute technical tweaks, stuff that's probably too complicated for you to understand. But we will get started because I think we're ready. All right. The other day we had some serious technical difficulties with the, uh, the, the upload speed and whatever. I hope it's smoother today. So we're going to repeat the same thing we did before, which is forms in a box. No, you don't know. Get you don't need to go get a cardboard box. I'm talking about a two-dimensional box on the floor. This is great practice. Uh, something great to know how to do in case you don't have space. You can just clear away some chairs in the living room or kitchen or in your bedroom. It's also good technical practice because it teaches you to chamber your body, um, uh, forecasting which way you're going to move. So um, something we mentioned the other day that I'll just say before we get started is uh, if I'm backing up to punch, this of course leaves my fist in the same place and it doesn't give any power. If I'm moving forward to punch, then I combine the power generated by my actual punch with the power generated by stepping forward, if that makes sense. And then the same thing when we're stepping forward to block. Uh, now check this out though. 99% uh, of the time you're gonna be moving forward. However, there are times you'll be moving backwards. Like in Paul Guy 1, uh, Paul Guy 1 goes like this. I do a down block. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I do a down block. No, no, no. In pocket one, I do an outside, outside, then I move backwards. Block, backwards to block like that. Can you tell that? I go block, block, then I move backwards, and then backwards. In that case, if you're doing a form that has a backwards motion in your box, why you'd step forward first. So you prepare or whichever direction the form has you moving. If I'm gonna go back, then I step forward first. Like this, back, I mean forward, and then back, forward, and then back. On the other hand, if I'm stepping forward, then I go back first so I can step forward. Back first so I can step forward. So you, uh, you chamber, you set up in the opposite direction that the form has you moving. So let's start with basic one. I'll be about mid three quarters of the way back in my square so that number one, I can move this way. And number two, I can move my foot left and have uh, a good shoulder width horse stance. If I started back in the very back right corner, and when I step shoulder width, I'd be outside the square. So I'll do that to help myself out. So basic one, down line, now we're moving forward. So back first, punch. Now I'm moving back this way. So I step forward first, then I turn. Down block, back first, punch. Now my foot's kind of far back in the square. So if I just leave it there, I'm gonna be outside the square for a good solid front sit. So I scooch it in a little. Then down block and I'm right in the square. Punch, punch, and height. Now I'm going this way. Right, a left turn. Look how close this foot is to the edge. So I'm going to get it here. Now I turn and I land right in the square. Like that. Down block. Punch. Now I'm going this way, but again, look how close my foot is. If I just stand there, I'm going to be outside the square. So I chamber it here first. 
Jump block. Punch. Punch. Hi! And even for the ready position, usually you would leave your foot here, right? But if I do, I'm going to be a little outside the square so I can bring it in a little. Like that. In that case, it's up to you to exercise good uh, body awareness because you don't want to get in the habit of pulling that back foot in normally when you do basic one. But it's kind of like what I always say about dance versus Taekwondo. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, the Taekwondo is going to mess up my dance or vice versa. I don't feel like that's the case if you've got your wits about you. If you've got your wits about you, all mixing dance and Taekwondo does is just wake up your awareness of how to move your body. You can move it like a dance kick or you can move it like a Taekwondo kick. Right? So uh, it's the same thing here. Yes, you'll be doing the form in a different way, exercising some different protocol, but if you practice them both, you're golden. All right, so that was an explanation kind of of how, how we go. So I think the three basics we can pretty much knock out without further explanation. So if you wanna do them with me, great. If you just wanna watch them straight through, that's cool too. But I'm doing basic one, two, and three. Basic one. And basic two. Na, 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 na. High punch, Master Yepo. And basic three. I don't need to be forward for this because it starts with a back stance, right? So I can cheat a little bit more. This is another disadvantage. You see how I forgot to do a high punch on basic two, even though I've been doing martial arts for over 30 years. That is because I forced myself to think by doing the forms in a different format. Now, number one, I'm gonna go get some water. I was gonna really try to not leave any dead air time today, but you can watch me right back there 
as I go get some water. And uh, then I'm going to check the chat to make sure we're coming in okay. See if anyone has any questions. I'll see you in two seconds. All right, let me put on my glasses and see who's shown up. Already liked it, DW? Oh, maybe you mean like the video or something. All right, cool. Well, um, nobody has any questions, so we will proceed. We'll go on to the Pyongans, Pyongan 1. Note on Pyongyang 1, we have to forecast those 45 degree angles. So this is really a good brain exercise because it makes you think about not only what you're doing, but what about what's coming next. So then let's go on with Pyongyang 2. Oh, by the way, I see some chow. <laughs> you guys like the intro. <laughs> I'll uh, tell you about that later. But anyway, if anybody's having any technical difficulties, like if the video is jumpy or uh, scratchy or fuzzy or whatever, let me know in the comments. So far, it looks like everything's cool. So we'll proceed with Pyongyang 2. Once again, starting in a back stance so I can go back a little farther in my square.
And this is worth noting that uh, the kicks can be confusing when you're doing forms in a box, but you follow the same protocol. If I'm going to step forward to kick and I'm not going to have room to land, I simply step back first, kick, and then do my uh, whatever combo technique. Let's look at just the kick part again. And note how you step back before you kick. Back. Adjust, back, right, it makes sense? I know it does, because you guys are smart. So let's do pill on five. Julio, and there are the five pylons in a box. So uh, let me check, make sure everything's going fine. Nobody's saying, oh my Lord, I can't see. Oh, Max from Dragons, what is up, dude? That's awesome. So when did Max come on? Tell you what, Max, let's try a little something. Uh, I'm going to go back, uh, and I think you already know a front stance from Dragon's class. So let's look at how to move forward with a front stance when there's nowhere to go. So watch. Max, I'm pretending that these, that these blue lines are walls, and it's very important to do that because you don't want to give yourself any slack. In fact, if you can find a room this small, like an outhouse, then that is a perfect training environment for doing the whole uh, forms in a box. So clear out your closet. Your mom's gonna say, what the smack are all your clothes doing on the floor and on the bed? And you'll say, because I'm practicing basic one in a box. Okay, so we're pretending these blue lines are walls. So no hands, I just step forward in a front stance. Now what happens if I step forward for another front stance? Bang, I run into the wall, great big knot on my head and a stubbed toe. So, you get right here, and step forward. Now before I step forward, I just step back first. Now I can go forward. Uh-oh, look, my foot went outside this line. So we just need to scoot over. But let's don't scoot over, let's compensate on the fly. So we're right next to the line, no space. 
we do our front stance. Now, I've got to think ahead. I've got to plan. If I step back to here, I'm going to be outside the line if I make a good shoulder width stance. So instead, I step back over here and then go forward. Let me show you that from the front. So you, can, you might not can see from the side. So let's see. Yeah, I started right here, I'm kind of hugging this line. And I make a front stance. If I bring my feet together and then make a good wide front stance, I'm outside the line. So I make a front stance and I say, oops, I need more room. So I scoot over here. Then I make another front stance. Now I'm in the line. So on every move in dragon form, in tiger form, in basic one or anything, you have to constantly be looking ahead. You have to be a step ahead of the form. Um, and um, this helps when you're doing exercises like against the wall, like sometimes we'll do uh, techniques down the line and let me get something to serve as a wall. I'm still here. So there's the wall or the window or the end of the dojo. How many times do you guys see even young black belts doing a form and they run into the wall and they do this? Here I go, here I go. Doing this one, down block, punch, down block. And they try to be funny like, oh, oh, oh I couldn't go anywhere. Oh, oh, oh. Not what you do. You use your forms in a box skills like this. Hey! Down block. Punch. Uh oh! Down block. No space, so I'll scoot back first. Punch. Then I can do the form full blast, no problem, and I don't get this little squinchy thing like that at the end, which I think they just do to be silly. So the same applies if we're doing techniques up and down the floor. One traditional karate class method, and a lot of schools do this like every class. In fact, that's an idea. Next time I see you guys, we're doing this. I'll go straight down the floor. We're disregarding the tape right now. I'll go straight down the floor, doing front stances. Then they turn around. And they do more front stances, da, 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 da. then they'll do down blocks, down block, down block, down block, down block, they turn around, down block, down block, down block, down block. Then they'll do punches, then they'll do high blocks. They'll even do combinations like this. or whatever. Problem is, you don't have infinite space in a dojo, do you? Sooner or later, you're gonna run into a wall and people do the same thing. They'll sit there doing this. Looking silly and I think they enjoy looking silly. Not what you do, here is what you do. So I'm headed down the floor, doing my combos. Step back. Step back, step back, step back, and then I never touch the wall, you see? So um, these box forms, box techniques really come in handy for more than just a novelty kind of a practice concept. All right, let me get this wall out of the way. All right, yesterday we had a, um, a little uh, seminar on the Joe Smith. So I'm going to try to pretty much um, recap, repeat everything we did yesterday. Then I'm going to delete yesterday's uh, recording because it's too jumpy, too um, frustrating to watch. And I am sweating. Got like this sheen of what feels like saran wrap over my body. So give me another second.
There we go. That way, when the gel makes contact with me, it won't get slippery and end up smashing into my computer. Oh, it's still slick. Look at that. It's disgusting. I would practice with a fan, but then the noise would be too much. Okay, so we learned the Hachi no G Gaesi. That means eight of figure turn. Hachi eight no of G means uh, figure. Gaeshi means turn. Kota Gaeshi, by the way. Kota means wrist. Gaeshi means turn. This is wrist turn. Sounds so exotic. Oh, we practice Kota Gaeshi. What you're saying is we practice wrist turn. Anyway, so the Hachi Noji Gaeshi, the figure eight turn. You hold your hand, the pinky side. Here's the middle. So I've got my hand like this. So it's going to be heavier on the pinky side. Because with this particular spin, that's your weapon side. You're kind of backhanding them like that, almost like you're going like this, except you have an extension for it, the end of the gel. Let's make the tape side the weapon side. So there's my weapon right there with the tape. Pinky right over the middle. I'm twirling that bad boy like that. And then we learn to switch hands. When your arm crosses your body and goes palm up, you jump in palm up with the other hand like that, and then this hand takes over. Still the tape is below the middle, right? Then when I cross my body and my palm is up, this palm goes up too, and I take over with this hand. After you get used to that, choose an odd number where you think you can get control of the Joe. Let's go with five. So here we go. One, two, three. Here it comes. Four, five. Palm up switch. One, two, three, four. Here it comes. Five. Palm up switch. One, two, three, four, five. Switch. One, two, three, four, five. Switch, etc. Then, when you get comfortable with that, try three. One, two, three, switch. One, two, three, switch. One, two, three, switch. One, two, three, switch. Then, one, which means we switch every time. Cross your body, switch. Cross your body, switch. Cross your body, switch. Cross your body, switch. After we've got that down, you see how this other hand's just hanging out? And this hand is left to control the jaw. Well, it can, but one hand can only do so much. However strong you are, two of your hands is stronger than one of them, right? So now when we switch, we're going to let the other hand ride along like that. And I can apply pressure right there, and then it's ready to slip right through. Apply pressure with this hand, and it's ready to slip right through. So it kind of braces the gel. And then I get as skinny as I can, which I'm trying to do, but no matter how skinny you are, you can't be zero. The gel would spin best if it was always on one plane, like this, right? Oh, Master Settles would be laughing at me right now. Yeah, like a propeller like that when you have to switch it back and forth, like if it were spinning here, great. Spinning here, great. When it has to switch from side to side, it challenges it a little bit. So you try to leave the gel in one place as much as possible. And if you can move, great, but once you get fast, you can't really move. So you get it as close to you as you can. Great practice is to go in a hall where there's nothing breakable and try it like this. Then you can really get moving because both hands are holding on to the jaw on the side. Cool. Okay. That's the first thing we need to learn. It's the two-handed spin. Let me make one more note on this two-handed spin. Notice the tape side is my weapon side. Bam. Bam. Bam like that. 
when I switch hands, what happens? I'm also switching ends. Now the no tape side is the weapon side. The no tape side is the weapon side. No tape, no tape, no tape, switch hands. Now the tape is the weapon, weapon side. That's because you're adding another half spin. Normally, we'd have gone from palm up straight over, but we're not. We're going palm up and then the other hand. Okay, we would have gone palm up, straight over. Instead, we go palm up, other palm takes over, does another half turn, now we come over. Other palm takes over, half turn, there's the other side. So when you're doing hachi no jigaeshi, it's one spin per side, and that slows you down somewhat. Once you join the other hand, now you have one and a half turns per side, which means you can get up a little more inertia, especially if you try to keep your body out of the way and keep it close. So look at the pacing of the two-handed spin. Now look at the Hachi no Jigaeshi. You see? And two hands. All right, so we need to get that two-handed spin down. To which we are going to add what I call the front back spin. I found it on YouTube ages ago and um, from some uh, uh, Kung Flu website. I mean Kung Fu website. So this one is based on the motorcycle grip. I'll get close. You don't need to see my pretty face. Don't worry, my face will be back soon enough. So you got it palm down like this. And we're going to turn over and put the thumb side behind us. You see the thumb side is no tape. Thumb, no tape. The pinky side has got the tape. So I'm putting my thumb side behind me. Twirls on around, and behind my back, I'm catching it like a motorcycle again. Like that. And then let it keep on spinning. Now, for the front, my pinky side is going to come to the front. So you have to let that thumb side go behind you, which is kind of difficult. There's my thumb. It goes behind me. And the pinky side cuts in front motorcycle thumb side behind catch it like a motorcycle pinky side in front motorcycle thumb motorcycle pinky motorcycle thumb motorcycle pinky motorcycle thumb motorcycle pinky motorcycle etc here's the way it looks from the back Okay, and of course, we want to learn to do both directions. So just now I started this way. Now I'm going to start this way. Thumb in the back, motorcycle. Pinky in front, motorcycle. Thumb, motorcycle. Pinky, motorcycle. Thumb, motorcycle. Pinky, motorcycle. You want to be just as comfortable going either direction. Now, you can mix those two together, which is really cool. So check it out. Here I am with the two-handed spin. And I step right through my spin. And now I'm doing the front back. Then two-handed spin. Cut right through. Front back. Two-handed spin. Motorcycle. Make sense? And you can practice this uh, at first the same way we did a while ago. Remember when we, um, we did five switch, then we did three switch, and then we switched on every one? Same thing applies here. So let's check it out. One, two, three, 
four, five, step through. Catch it. Two, three, four, five, step through. One, two, three. So I get comfortable. When I'm comfortable, I switch. I get my bearings. When I'm comfortable, switch. Uh, let's talk about that switch a little bit. So switching from the two-handed spin to the front back spin like this, you're going to go on the back leg side. So when I'm on my back leg side, I just let go with this hand. Step through. Catch it like a motorcycle. Now I'm into this thing. On this thing, when I'm in the front, I catch it, switch hands. Now which leg's in the back? This one, which is why you have to be able to do that front back spin in either direction. Because now I'm going to be facing away from you, so I have to be able to spin it in the other direction. So check it out. Then when it's in front of me, I switch. So you, you switch on fewer and fewer rotations as you get comfortable with it until finally you can switch every time like this. Just likey that team. What do you think? Let me get a drink of water and check the chat. Master Jeff, what makes you so cool? Oh, why, thank you. Oh, wait. No, I'm, I have my diary open on another page. Never mind. Did everybody like the video? Yep. Thank you. Great. GM Max from Little Dragons. Hi, hi, hi. Hey, that's Shotokan. Yes, it is. Our style, in fact, is simply a... Uh, uh, it's, it's basically Shotokan with uh, Korean names. The uh, Japanese occupied Korea for, what was it, 40 years? Something like that. And during that time, they had to do everything Japanese. And when the uh, Japanese left, they kept Shotokan and just stuck Korean names on it until somebody says, wait a minute, all this is, is the same thing with Korean terminology. So they altered it a little bit and made Taekwondo. Well, our style um, from our instructor was the style that was first present when the Japanese first left. So it's really Shotokan with uh, Japanese terminology. But of course, we've also picked up the new stuff, the new concepts and techniques. So ours is a very much an eclectic style that is very close to just Shotokan. Even our sparring, we punch to the face, back fist to the face, whereas um, Taekwondo, modern Taekwondo, uh, you only kick. You can do body punches, but you have to like reverse body punch and move them in order to score in competition. At least the last time I checked. So let me see, Max is trying to follow it. Good, good Max. Are you trying to follow, is he trying to follow the broomstick or the uh, basic one in a box? Of course, you guys are going to hear that question like two minutes. I'll be two minutes into this before you answer, but I'll come back and check. So um, another one for Max. Max, you can practice your kicks. Of course, it's great in Little Dragons when you have a target. It's great for us, too, when we have targets. But it's really good to get control of your body and learn to just kick in the air. It's very important to learn to do both. If you just kick the air, you'll never know what it feels like to actually hit something, which, of course, is eventually what we're going to do with the kicks. However, if you're always hitting something, you don't know what it feels like to just control the kick. Like, what if you kick at something in combat and you miss? You need to know what that feels like, too. So, again, it's just like the um, concept I was talking about a while ago. I believe in getting your body awake, connected to your mind, and in as much control 
uh, as possible. So yeah, go do ballet or salsa or whatever. You're going to move your feet differently than in Taekwondo, even though there will be some crossover. But the more ways you know how to move your body, then the more ways you can move your body. So it's the same with the kicks. You learn to kick targets, you learn to kick in the air. So let's do some kicks just for Max in the air. So Max to do front kicks down the floor, you put one foot back and you're gonna kick and step forward with the kicking leg. So this leg is both gonna kick and step forward. It's gonna kick and step forward. And then you also, at first you, you might lose your balance or whatever, so your hands will be doing this. Eventually you wanna practice this enough where you have enough balance where you have complete control of your hands. So as long as your hands, excuse me, are doing what you want them to do, it doesn't really matter what you do with them. It's good to practice like this. It's good to practice with your arms out just to get them out of the equation, but you wanna know where they are and you wanna be doing it on purpose. So let's look at a couple of variations of what you can do with your hands, Max. So first, we'll get our hands out of the equation. Just leave them here. I don't want to control them. So I kick, step forward. I kick, step forward. I kick, step forward. I kick, step forward. Now let's do them in a fighting stance. I kick, step forward. I kick, step forward. I kick, step forward. I kick, step forward. Then once you get that down, you can start adding in some combos. Like let's do an outside block punch after our kick. Actually, I'm going to do a punch outside block, just like we do in pinon two. But you see, regardless of what I did, I was in control of my feet and in control of my hands. Uh, how does that grab you? Well, you can't tell me. I hope it grabs you good. And if not, you can, of course, come back and watch the rewind, even in slow motion. Let me check the chat and see what's going on. Oh, wow, yes. Max is following all of it. So uh, Max, remind me how old you are. And are you uh, as school or that? Is that Little Dragons our school or are you at Sunset? Or another outreach, one of our outreach programs. Oh, and don't worry, this will not go. Uh, the chat uh, disappears on the rewind for, for everybody's information. All right, let's see what time it is. 11.05, okay, we still have a few minutes, very cool. So let me get some water. Okay, so Aikido is a very interesting art. I means harmony. Ki means energy, like chi power, ki power, same thing, Chinese, Japanese. Ki is um, Japanese, chi, Chinese. And then do means way of life, like karate is really karate do, the um, empty hand way. Taekwondo is the foot fist way. Judo, believe it or not, means the gentle way, even though um, it has more toe breaks than any other art. And then uh, Aikido is the harmony energy way. <clears throat> now, harmony means two things happening melodically at once, right? They happen together, uh, which implies that there has to be two sources there. 
And usually with Aikido, there does. They're called the uke and the nage. The uke is the one who is the fake attacker. They serve as the attacker, the uke. Nage is the one who does the throw. In fact, nage means throw. So you have uke and nage. Uh, you'll hear the kids at South Miami Taekwondo, oh, I want to be the uke, I want to be the uke. And of course I say, fine, you can be the uke. <laughs> but it's not uke, it's uke. So we don't have an uke, right? Well, there are things you can do. Um, using your Joe as an uke. For example, ikkyo. With ikkyo, you're gonna, if I'm the uke, the attacker, what's gonna end up happening is nage, the responder, the defender, is gonna twist the attacker's arm this way. So the attacker ends up pinned like this for, uh, for ikkyo. But where, how can I practice that with nobody here? Well, you can have your Joe, and you can pretend it's someone else's arm punching at you. You do an outside block, you grab his arm, you get this one to help, and you throw him down like that. Ikkyo. Comes over here, he's punching at me. I block, grab his wrist, take him down like that. And there's my Ikkyo. For Nikkyo, Nikkyo is going to make Uke, or the attacker, going to make his hand look like this. So here is Uke, the attacker's hand. Here's Nage, the defender. He's going to do something to the wrist and pull it over like that. So you can actually do Nikkyo to yourself like that. You can also be the Uke and let your Joe be the Nage. So I've grabbed Nage's wrist. He comes over like this and pushes my wrist down. You see? So there's Nage pushing Uke's wrist down. I can even cover my hand first so I can't get away. So this is Nage's hand, and uh, this is Nage's hand. The only Uke is this hand. So I'm grabbing. He traps my hand and comes over like that. There's a full Nikyo. All right, what about Sankyo? Well, first we need to know what Sankyo does. Sankyo makes Uke's arm look like this. Here's Uke's arm. The attacker's arm ends up like this. The defender, Nage, has him like this. We can practice the same way. What usually ends up happening is you have to walk under uh, Uke's arm in order to get there. So there we go. Here's um, Uke attacking me like this. I grab him, I come through under his arm, and there's Sankyo, like that. Shihonage. Shihonage is going to be a difficult one to practice with the Joe simply because both people have their arms curled up. But we can look at Shihonage. That's the way it's going to end up looking. I'm, this is Uke's arm. The attacker is going to end up like this. The defender is going to have him like this. A close cousin of Shihonage is what we mentioned a while ago, Kota Gayashi, which of course means wrist turn. Here's Uke's, here's Uke's arm. Here's Nage's. And actually, this is a right on left technique. So this hand being the nage, this being the uke, this is exactly how it would look. Because nage would use his left against uke's right, so that's exactly how you do it. You don't need the jump. Same over here. Now here's the uke, here's the attacker, here's the defender grabbing attacker's hand and bending it over like that. See my thumb pushing here? So you can do that with yourself. And then both uh, Ikkyo and Nikkyo are whole body kind of throws. You're going to catch uh, uh, Uke under the chin. Basically, you're supposed to be coming up and kind of going through. But oh, I, we could use the Joe here because he's come to uh, hit me or whatever, and I'm grabbing him. Now his body would be here. You have to use your imagination. And then I'm coming here to stretch him out. So I've got a hold of his wrist, 
If it's my left hand, I'm grabbing his left hand. So he's done a cross grab. He's grabbed me and I've come over like this and grabbed his wrist. So it looks like a mountain climber's grip. And then I come through here, pull his arm and go up on his chin and stretch him out. So this arm is coming up under here. And this one is stretching his hand out like that. So he's grabbing me. I'm turning over, grabbing him like a mountain climber's grip. Pulling him through, stretching him out. Boom. There he goes. Down. And with Irime, Nage, uh, Irime, I-R-I-M-E, Irime, means uh, just to enter. You even have like Irime Tenkan with no uke, which looks like this. Irime Tenkan means to turn. Tenkan. Irime Tenkan. Irime Tenkan. Just like that. Well, with Irimi Nage, you're knocking Uke's hand out of the way. Say he comes to punch me with his right hand. I knock it out of the way, and I come through, catch him under the chin, kind of going up, over, and down. Then I can leave, get behind his back, and catch his belt, and take him right over. It ends up looking like a base clef, like that. You start here, up and around, just like that, a base clef. So here he comes with a punch, whatever. Parry, catch his belt, whoo, take him down like a base clef. Parry, catch his belt, whoo, take him down like a base clef. A base clef, by the way, is a music symbol. It means that the second line, it means that F is wherever the two dots are. Most commonly, it's sometimes, in fact, referred to an F clef because um, with the music we're, we're accustomed to reading, it's usually on the second line down, which means F. You could put it on the third line, the fourth line, you could put it on the top line, but wherever those two little dots on a bass clef are, that's F. How did we go from forms in a box to music? Oh, well, so it goes. Let me check the chat. Oh, boy, and speaking of checking, it's getting a little late, folks. Very good. Okay, that, that is what I figured. I see um, where you uh, uh, told me about Max. I, I estimated his age at about that. So um, very good. Uh, so hopefully that stuff will make sense. And you guys got here a little late. I don't know how many forms he knows yet, but um, you can apply what we did today to the dragon form, to the tiger form, and then to every form all the way through to, to, um, to um, a ninth degree black belt. So um, uh, um, we're going to do one more thing. We'll close up for Max since he missed the beginning. Let's do the dragon form with our new forms in a box contest, uh, contest concept, forms in a box concept. So watch. So the way you normally do the dragon form, down block, punch, pick up this leg, down block, punch. But we're pretending that those blue lines are closet walls, right? So we're just going to have to adjust our feet. So we go down block. Oops, I'm already out of room. So we step back first. Punch. Now we're supposed to go like this, but we'll go over the line. So we step forward as we turn around. Down block. If I step forward, I'll go over the line. So I step back. Punch. So here, nice and slow, is a little is the uh, dragon form in the box. And then the same thing applies to the tiger form. The secret, Max, is you have to be a step ahead of the form. You have to know what's coming and step the opposite direction that you're about to go and adjust your feet. So it really helps to have some tape because you're already trying to think of how to move your body. You don't need to also be holding in your mind where your imaginary borders are. So tape really helps. Just make yourself a front stance and give yourself maybe six inches extra so you'll have some wiggle room. So here's the tiger form in a box. 
Actually, first I'll show it to you normally, just for a quick review. So tiger form, forget the box. We're disregarding the box. This is regular tiger form. Hi. Now we'll pretend that the blue lines are actually walls and we cannot step over them or we'll try to not even step into them. So now we'll do tiger form in a box. And there you go, Max A. I hope uh, that helps you. And if you know basic one and some other forms, that's great. Just as soon as this video is over, you go back, you click re rewind, you watch the uh, you watch the whole thing again, and we start with basic one. And a good one for you, Max, is the the Joe spin we were doing a while ago. The first one, Hachi no Jigai. Actually, let's do it one more time, slow for you, just to review. You can have, you and your mom can first put tape on one end so you can tell the ends apart. And then by balance, you um, find the middle and put tape there too. That way you know where the middle is. See, it's by balance. Okay. So you hold your pinky right over the tape so this side's heavier. Then you simply make a figure eight. You see that sideways figure eight, Max? It's just a figure eight. That's what I'm doing with my hand. Now watch when I put a Joe in it. Can you still see the eight? Try to ignore the stick and just look at my hand. It's making a sideways eight. Maybe they should have called it the infinity spin instead of figure eight spin. And then you just speed it up and you kind of crunch your eight down. The eight is still there, but it's really crunched down. So there is your figure eight spin. Your thumb is always leading. There's my thumb coming over. There's my thumb over and down, over and down, over and down. And Max, you might want to start with something plastic. And for all of you, if you're going to practice with a Joe, just get it over with. Bonk, 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 ah, ooh, ooh, because ah, you're going to get some bruises. You're going to bang yourself up. But um, um, unfortunately, that is the best way to train your subconscious mind to keep that stick away from your elbows and knees and head is to bonk yourself. Until you bonk yourself, it's always a conscious thought. Once you bonk yourself, that's it. Uh, all right, guys, it has been loads of fun. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, let me check again in case there are any last minute questions. Loved it. Awesome. Very good. All right, in that case, guys, I'm out of here. Oh, watch your email for um, uh, for next week. We'll definitely have some um, some classes next week. It, it would have been spring break. Is it still spring break since the schools are closed anyway? I don't know. We would have been off for a week for spring break anyway, but we'd have done unofficial classes. We're still doing unofficial classes. I'm just casting them uh, via live stream. In fact, I might do something fun, like do it from my house. Maybe give you guys a tour of the tree house and my workshop and show you our chickens and our trampoline and my cruddy old black bike during one of our uh, unofficial classes. So just stay tuned. Tell your parents to please watch the email, mom, so I can make Master Jeff's crazy classes. All right, guys, I will see you next time. Thank you for coming.
This has been a South Miami Hyper Dome live stream with Master Jeff. Avoid practicing the techniques learning live stream with Master Jeff. I'll run stone, slash, tipsy, buzz, blotto, slammed, plowed, jolly, play, I'd hammered, wasted, inebriated, or otherwise intoxicated. Watching live stream with Master Jeff, you acknowledge the possibility of it. Leave all way available for you. Mental lacerations of simple fracture, broken over the human endure, dislocation, strain, restrain, wrist, hyperextended elbow, broken ribs, bruising, or bleeding, tears, strains, fractures, dislocated shoulder, or concussion. All rights reserved. Unauthorized presentation and publication strictly prohibited.